What's up guys, in this episode of Platinum Tech, we are talking about adjustable or vernier cam gears. So adjustable cam gears are more important than people think. Everyone needs them. They don't realize why. And a lot of people say the camshaft they use doesn't need dialing. Well, that's all good and well, but how is your camshaft position in reference to the crank of that engine changing? Have you decked the head? Have you decked the block? Have you running a bigger, a bigger head gasket? What's your compression ratio doing? Are you chasing a different compression ratio and forgetting that you're having to move your cams in accordance with the crank to get them in the right spot? And how much of a difference does it make when you're adjusting cam gears? I've seen engines pick up 500 uh, RPM in, in lag or response. Not everyone's buying the same combination of turbo exhaust manifold. You might have different intake manifold, different displacement engine, who knows? But not all engines are created equal and not all cams are ground in the same uh, orientation and you need to dial your cams in on every engine built, different head gasket thickness, different compression ratios, different deck heights, all that sort of stuff changes. So you really need to dial a set of cams in specific to that engine every time you build that engine. Even if you think it's a cookie cutter sort of recipe, something's gonna change and you really need to dial it in to get it in the right spot to begin with. And then on the dyno, you might wanna play with it to get your power to come in or go out at a certain area or try and adjust it because something's not quite right. You won't know until you're chasing power on a dyno and just try a few degrees, each cam in every direction. You'll see how much of a difference it makes you be surprised. To give you a good example of a, of a moderately low powered car, Everyday Streeter was the Motive GDR back in the days of 300 kilowatts, where a set of cam gears made 10% difference, 330 odd kilowatts at the wheels. So it doesn't matter how big the engine is, you can go and pick up 10% is 10%. And if you're gonna pick it up at 300 horsepower, 300 kilowatts, you're gonna pick it up at 1,000. So it's well worth spending the time on the dyno to dial in some cams to try and chase the response that you want. So the reason I wanted to make our own version of cam gears was for three main reasons. One is to have all the features in cam gears that some manufacturers had, others didn't. Well, there's a whole heap of things that we wanted to incorporate in a cam gear and nail them all, tick all the boxes. The second one is colors. Why shouldn't you be able to have any color that you want? We offer them in 12 colors and you should be able to nail your engine bay with the color scheme according to how you want to do it, not just because some manufacturer makes you go for a red cam gear, for example. Lastly, the cam gears are a center point of the engine. Why wouldn't we want to have our nice flashy bit of cam gear spinning right at the heart of the engine to attract attention that's going to look great and offset everything else that we make and tie it all in together? It's, it's just a must have, so we wanted to nail it. So the major concern that most people have with a cam gear is slippage. We really wanted to go out of our way to avoid the fear of having a cam gear slip. We've seen it all happen before. And one of those things was having not two or three bolts, but five. So we straight away went to a five bolt system. Then we thought, no, I can do better than that. We need some sort of a locking mechanism. Nothing sort of existed, hadn't really noticed anyone. No one really made a lock. So we came up with a little smart tooth locking system which works really well. And we'll show you later on in the video how well it works, but it's a secondary lock as a, uh, on top of all the other bolts, bolting it all together, you've got all that friction lock. There was a mechanical lock as well, which just gave us a feature, an added bonus. So we're a little bit concerned about adding extra weight with our extra bolts, having the five bolts. So I thought, why not make them out of titanium? They're really light and it's just a feature add to our cam gear. And they also look spectacular and they never dull and they don't go rusty. So it was just gonna be the way forward for us. A little bit more expense, but we've thrown them in. After we started making all these cool looking cam gears, the standard Nissan plate kind of looked a little bit daggy and the bolts we wanted to make out of titanium as an option as well. So we've, uh, we've made a nicely machined uh, stainless plate. It's the right thickness, everything works well, and a titanium M7 type bolt retainer. It just ties it all in nicely. So we put the locking mechanism to the test. We try a few different versions, obviously, but once we've got it safely secured in this vise, make sure it's not gonna spin. We've then applied 100 Newton meters of load with a torque wrench, but having all of the outside bolts of the cam gear completely loose, and then the locking mechanism finger tight, just, just not even nipped up. And we've given it 100 Newton meters of load to show you how much it's not gonna slip with that little locking mechanism slightly done up. Once it's 
tensioned, you're just not ever going to move it. To step up the ante, doing it up a little harder by hand, obviously just with a screwdriver type uh, tool, I was able to crank the torque wrench up to 200 newton meters, which was as hard as it goes, and I still couldn't get it to budge until I gave it a second sort of little attempt with everything I had to get it to move. So that coupled with actually tensioning it and doing the rest of the bolts up, mate, you are never gonna move that cam gear. So we realized whilst trying to do our cam gear test, there was no way of making the cam gear move or adjust it while we were trying to get it to spin without hurting or damaging the cam gear. And I just noticed back in the old tuning days, you'd have to hit it with a screwdriver and butcher it. And I didn't want people to butcher our nice new cam gears. So we made this, uh, sort of plastic insert that you put on the end of your half inch ratchet and that just sort of clips in as you can see there and then you can actually swing on it with a whole heap of weight to get your cam to move so you can adjust your cam gear without hurting the thing. I thought it was just an absolutely essential part of our process. So right in the beginning I wanted to always do an alley cam gear but there was a bunch of people we did a, a Instagram sort of a you know tick post and we still had like 30% of people wanted a steel outer. Now, I feel that's because other gears on the market wear out. And because that's a decorative anodized, not a hard anodized, it's hard to remove that stigmatism away from that uh, anodized alley gears. So we've come to try and prove why a hard anodized outer is all you need and the benefits of it all. So the test that we did to prove that decorative anodizing doesn't cut the mustard when it uh, gets compared to hard anodizing is this well-known aftermarket gear. So what we did with the decorative anodized cam gear, stuck it on a lathe with some wet and dry sandpaper, and straight away you can see that the blue is coming off onto the sandpaper and it's wearing down fairly quickly. Then you'll notice that after you know, not even 20 seconds, most of the outer edge of that cam gear is showing through, the alloy is showing through, and we can effectively prove that that decorative anodizing wasn't going to hang around for very long. Therefore, we get this worn gear look, obviously discoloration. It doesn't take long for the cam belt to actually wear away the cam gear and definitely blow away the color and the anodizing. It just doesn't look right didn't take long at all for the sandpaper to remove the color. Comparing it to our hard anodizing on the lathe, you can see that with the same wet and dry sandpaper, holding it up there for quite a while, it's just the sandpaper is starting to delaminate. It's not actually the hard anodizing coming off, it's coming off clear after you know more than uh, enough pressure getting exerted on that cam gear. You can see that it's not the color coming off, it's not the olive green coming off, It's it's the sandpaper is just wearing out. So then we went along and after doing the outside edge and the inner barrel, just like we did our, our original cam gear, I've gone and got some uh, 120 grit sandpaper and done the same thing, pushed you know, fairly hard to try and get the anodizing to come off and you can see that it just hasn't. So then to step it up a notch, I've put the sandpaper the whole way around the cam gear and really pulled on it to try and delaminate that surface and you can see and after that attempt, it actually hasn't. There's a little bit of the corner chipped away, but uh, other than that, these things will cop that abuse with a much harsher sandpaper to demonstrate that the hard anodizing is just never gonna wear out. So let's talk about weight. Massive difference with reciprocal mass, and I don't need to educate you on why. Google it, but it is a huge amount of difference. Let's talk about how much difference. That's what's uh, more interesting to me. So a factory cam gear weighs around 550 grams. Our steel version of an adjustable cam gear, 590 grams. We've got to account for extra hardware, bits and pieces. Obviously, there's a lot more to it. Uh, in comparison with our alley cam gear, they weigh around 350 uh, on average across the board. Now, we've got uh, more bolts and bits and pieces. We've toughened up and, and beefened up a few areas, but in comparison to the rest of the alley cam gears on the market, they all range between about 325 to 350. So we're splitting hairs there with the difference, but massive difference between steel and alley. The main differences with this weight is right around the outside of the ring, not the center. We're not so much worried about the center because the further you put that weight, the more difference it makes. You know, when you put a kid on the spinny thing at the playground, 
put him in the middle, it's okay, he can hang on, it's no big deal. Move him towards the outside, you're going to fling him off that thing. Same thing with the cam gears. Steel, it's around the outside, it is crucial. The alloy ones, massive difference. So that's where it makes the difference. The further out, the bigger the difference. One more thing we realized whilst developing our cam gears is a lot of cam gear manufacturers have a timing mark and they also have a top dead center mark. And it's really easy to confuse the both and I've had issues in the past and I've heard of a lot of issues where people just pick the wrong mark because they're not paying attention, grenaded engine. So why have it? I, I don't understand. It's obvious. RBs, for example, your timing marks are to the sides and manufacturers might want them to have, you know, to be up the top 12 o'clock uh, TDC and the few degrees in either direction. But it only ever matters when you're actually timing the engine. And when you're timing the engine, you don't want to be distracted with other marks on the cam gear. So who cares? We've put all our timing marks in one spot, which is the ones you use to time your engine. They're the ones you use to degree your cams. That's all you need. We just wanted to keep it simple and not throw confusion or potential for confusion into such a delicate process. So to sum up, they're the reasons why we've made our own cam gears. They're available in all the colors and so far we've covered the RB, there's a CA18, we're just about to release the JZ in both steel and alley for now until we convince everyone that they don't need the steel ones. We've got the 1UZ about to drop and Evo, we're also about to release the Evo, not too distant future. So now that I've talked you through all the added features and bonuses of our cam gears, we're going to go and throw a set on Andrew's car.